What's up? Happy Tasty Tuesday, Whiskey Friends, far and wide. We're live. I'm Eric, your humble mob user. It's Tuesday, so y'all are in the right place. Three hours of whiskey chat coming up. Kicking it off with, as always, Tuesday happy hour. What's popping, y'all? How's everybody doing? I know there's uh, a lot of weather happening around the country right now, so I hope everybody is uh, staying safe and warm and all that. It's been a little bit gnarly here in Philly. Before I set the show up, let's uh, let's say hello to our early birds. As always, we've got a bunch of them in the house, it looks like. Six folks in the chat already. What's up? What you guys got in the glass? Let's get going. Tamika coming in first again. Covered in snow here in Chicago and can't get to the store. Some more Gentleman Jack for me tonight. All right. Pour it up. Enjoy that. Lost Cause down in the bayou. Bullet single barrel picks. Oh, and he's got the Maduro going. Man, Lost Cause is kicking up his boots tonight. Looking good, man. Let me know what those barrel picks are all about. I don't think I've ever seen a bullet barrel pick. There's French up in Duluth. Sounds great. Yeah, it does. It does sound good. Daniel, warming up with the classic Lottie, 70 degrees in Texas. Ah, crazy, man. Not exactly what's going on up here in the uh, in the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic or whatever you want to call it. More like 40 with cold rain. So it goes. Mika saying, hi, Emily Chambers. Can't say long, but hey, what's up, Emily? Good to see you. Cheers. Gentleman Jack is fine. I actually don't think I've ever had it. I might have. I don't remember it, though. <laughs> Tamika says, ladies in the chat tonight. What's up? It's Tuesday ladies night. Saying hi to Tamika. Nothing wrong with the Gentleman Jack. Yeah. I'm not sure. I got a, it's been a long, long while since I've had anything from Jack Daniels, actually. So I got to check that out. Is it worth picking up? No, Tamika says it's straight, but not not the fave. Don't love Jack, but got to do with what you got. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> Keep the boys in line. <laughs> Emily and Tamika are about to take over this chat, y'all. <laughs> Good stuff. Peter White, what's up in Ontario? Good to see you, buddy. Happy Tuesday, Solancha. Hope everybody had a good uh, Robert Burns night last night. If everybody got to have a four. I know I did. Preaching. <laughs> Too funny. Looking very clear. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, I think I think we were over the over the hump with the issues with video. So really sorry about all that shit over the past couple of weeks. Peter's got the Teeling 16-year-old single cast bottle kill. Oh man. I went to Teeling when I was in Dublin last year. Um, really cool distillery. I didn't get to do the tour. I got there late, but I did pick up uh little sample bottles and stuff from them. They had a, they didn't have a lot available in their gift shop because I got there so late, but would love to have done the whole experience. What's up, Jack? Tasty Tuesday. Cheers to you. The Torfer from Van Glassa. All right. Andrew Page, We Witchy, and We BC. Oh, shit. You got a theme going over there tonight, buddy? Lost Cause, yeah, I've heard a lot about that bear poop. I actually, I did get to try it over the holidays when I was in Milwaukee, and um, yeah, it was, it was good. Uh, I also had their, that, I think it's barrel proof or single barrel rye that Jack Daniels put out. That was also really solid. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to have to grab a bottle of that one of these days. All right, y'all. Let me set things up. So for happy hour tonight, going to kick things off with a sample. It was sent to me from a good friend of the show and follower on Instagram, Michael. He's down in Florida. I'm going to be trying this Balcones Mirador. Um, this is a single malt that came out of the Balcones distillery down in Texas. Daniel probably knows all about this one already. Uh, but I'm going to pour this in the glass, have a couple tastes of this one. I've heard good things. And then, uh, you know, we are in the thralls of winter, so I am going to crack open bottle of our bag dark cove this is the limited release not the uh the committee release which is highly sought after but this is these are not necessarily easy to get your hands on either i guess 
Uh, luckily, I did. I was able to, and I've had this for a little bit. It's time to open it up. And it's going to segue really nice into Telex and Malt's Tasty Tuesday show tonight. After the show, uh, after happy hour, we're going to be doing um, an art bag show. So we're going to parlay this right into more art bag. We're going to be doing hour number one, revisiting the classic art bag 10. Uh, can't go wrong with art bag 10 ever, in my opinion. Uh, so Telex and I are going to do a little tasting of that, see how that's been holding up after all of these years. And then, hour number two, we're doing a face-off. Ardbeg Black Committee release versus the Ardbeg Black Limited release. So we're going to do a little comparison between those two pours. Um, that should be a lot of fun. I have not had the limited release Black from Ardbeg yet. Um, for folks who don't know, Ardbeg Black was the uh, uh, it was like their Ardbeg Day release. They do manually. That was the one from 2020. Uh, rumor has it the one coming out this year is going to be called the Scorch but I'm not so sure. Uh, we'll find out. And so, yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be doing a little comparison. Um, you know, the price difference on things like committee releases versus the standard releases is pretty substantial. The committee releases are also harder to get. Um, so we're going to do a little taste test, see what's up, see how they compare to each other. It should be a lot of fun. So if you are into heavily peated whiskeys, want to talk our bag, we're going to kick it off here on the happy hour with the dark cove. And then we'll parlay that into uh, our bag 10 and some black. So three hours of whiskey chat coming up as always, my friends. It's so great to hang out. Hope everybody's had a good week. Let's get into it. I'm going to get this uh, Mirador from Balcones um, in the glass. I got a nice, sweet Philadelphia Whiskey Society glass. They just came in. Super stoked to pick these up this week. And I'm going to get a clean one for this because why would I use that old one? Here's another one. So, where is this at? So apparently this is a single malt uh, coming out of Balcones Distillery out in Texas. I think they're in Waco, if I'm not mistaken. 56.2%. Uh, we'll get this in the glass, let it settle down. I'll catch up on the chat and then we'll check this out. Let me know though, uh, Balcones has been a reoccurring theme thanks to our friend Daniel who's been uh, really generous with Balcones samples. Uh, let me know if you guys have had this Mirador before. Uh, I'm not sure what to expect out of it. And honestly, also not sure what to expect out of the Dark Cove, which we're going to be checking out uh, probably in about 20, 30 minutes. I have had the committee release Dark Cove. It was quite delicious. Uh, but I, this is the, like I said, the limited release. So we'll be checking this out, see what's going on with that. All right. Let's get it going. Tasty Tuesday, y'all. Let me catch up here on the chat quick, and then we'll check out this now. Balcones. All right. We got going on. BP Rye Single Barrel. Oh, are you talking about the, oh, the Jack Daniels? Yeah, it was good. I was surprised. I picked it up, um, or like I said, I had a sample of it when I was in uh, Wisconsin for the holidays. It was really, really tasty. I was impressed. Oh. Praise for the Mirador. Excellent. Cool, cool, cool. Maher, coming all the way from India, my friend. Thank you so much. You know what? You'll be happy, man. You know what I just picked up this week? Paul John uh, Christmas release, 2000, or Christmas edition 2020. So I got that in route to me as we speak. I'm stoked for that, man. I've heard nothing but good things. It is like, it's X, X Sherry. It's X uh, it's it's uh, American virgin oak, and then it's X peated bourbon cask. So, man, I'm stoked to hit that. If you've had that, let me know. I'm going to probably crack that one on the stream, too, because I'm stoked for that. It's been a while since I've had a good Indian whiskey. Glad you could tune in, bud. I'm sure it's early in the morning for you. Daniel's forgetting how much he loved the classic Lottie. Yeah, classic Lottie, man. It's been a long time since I've had that one, too, but I remember liking it. Brook Lottie doesn't really make anything that's, that underwhelms, in my opinion. At least that I've had. Welsh Toro. What's up? Hope's all is well with you, my friend. Glad you're staying healthy over there in uh, the UK these days. Matt D, damn, this Oogie double nice. Just said, oh, yeah. You can't screw with the Oogie, man. It's your first one? Glad you got an Ardbeg to pour. As I was saying, we're going to be doing a lot of Ardbeg tonight. The only Ardbeg we get here is the 10-year-old. Oh, bummer, man. Well... It's not a, that's no slouch. <laughs> it's a good whiskey. Uh, I did a, a video a couple months ago of like 
comparing the heavily peated tens I highlighted, the Port Charlotte, the Ardbeg, and the Laphroaig. And yeah, I think the Ardbeg, Ardbeg won it out for me. I just, I don't know. If there's something about it. it, it there's something about just that, that kind of uh, chimney soot kind of, um, I don't know what you want to call it, like road tar note combined with that merit, like, like that deep seaweed, like vegetal note. Like that. I just, it's just so good. I, you know, and then it's got the sweetness and the citrus. It's not the most complex whiskey in the world, but I just feel like it captures the essence of all the Isla whiskey. But that's just me. I'm sure everybody else has got opinions about that. And um, yeah, let me know in the chat though, if you have a, before we get into more about our bag, if you got opinions about um, Balcones. Uh, and there he is. Cheers, Michael. Thanks for swinging in, buddy. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, thanks again for sending me this sample. Um, we have another uh, Balcones uh, aficionado in the chat as well, Daniel. He's uh, also gets a lot hands on a lot of good Balcones. Um, so I'm sure you all would, you guys can probably know more about this whiskey than I will for sure. Paige, I got a little bit left of the limited release black in a sample jar. I've been saving for a future stop, but I'll have it tonight. Oh, yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, if you can tune in, buddy, that would be great. Can we can sip it together? I'm really looking forward to it. I've never done a comparison of like a committee release versus the limited. So, uh, and I really liked the committee release black. I thought it was a they really redeemed themselves after the the drum, which I thought was pretty pretty weak. Whiskey straight Al. How are things in Paris, my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for swinging in. Happy Tasty Tuesday. Sold out. Oh yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that one, bud. If you get uh, if you get your hands on it, I, I think it's going to be fantastic. I, I was really lucky to find it here. Bourbon Bounty, what's up? Been a while, man. Happy 2021. Hope you're doing well. If y'all uh, are into bourbon or just want to watch a sub to a good channel, take a sec. Sub to Bourbon Bounty's channel. Uh, same with Whiskey Straight Out. They're both doing great content, man. I appreciate you for hopping in. <laughs> nice, Matt D. Matt D's first Oogie tonight, man. Yeah, you, uh, Oogie Doll, the first time I had it, it was one of those, probably the most magical scotch experiences I ever had. I had it on New Year's Eve, I want to say like four or five years ago, and it blew my mind, man. It just blew my mind. I couldn't believe how good that was. If, you, uh, if you're a, a carnivore, man, Try a glass of that with a steak. It, it's it's next level. Welsh tour out a week off the booze. First time in 25 years kicking back with some overproof white Jamaican rum. Okay. Do it. Nothing wrong with a little rum in January. Got the Paul John Peters selects right on, right on. Good stuff. Great chair, man. Never had him in Mirador because it's almost out until recently. All right, cool. I love the black. We'll have to get DH Silv to play. To oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's his MO, man. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that one. I remember he was chatting about it. I, I don't know. I thought it was good. I mean, maybe I worth the price, but I thought it was good. Alcone's lineage is a single malt, not scotch. Maybe I'll pour that next. Oh, yeah. Check it out. All right. So, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to dig into another Balconius here. Um, we got 18 folks in the chat, which is awesome, man. Thanks, everybody, for stopping in. Appreciate the support. Hit the thumbs up if you can. It does a lot to uh, promote the channel, which is always great, man. The more people in the better. So, what I got here is Balconius Mirador. This is at 56.2%. Uh, did a little bit of research on this ahead of time so I could share some notes. And, of course, I've forgotten everything I read. <laughs> so give me a sec while I re-pull this up and let you all know what's going on with this with, with this whiskey. It is a single malt. It is out of a, it's in second fill barrels. So refills, apparently, probably all ex-bourbon. Um, two to five years old. And yeah, comes out of the Balcones Distillery in Texas, who of course are doing tons of great Texas whiskeys. So that's the tale of the tape on this one. Um, Price-wise, it looks like it's around that 80 or 90 to 100 dollar mark, which is you know substantial. But I don't know if Balcones puts any color in, but I think because it's not technically a bourbon, so they don't have the bourbon rules. But here's what it looks like: kind of light, kind of a, like a pale gold. Reminds me a little bit of like a uh, like a Lafroy in terms of its color. Let's go into the nose. Cheers, y'all. Happy Tasty Tuesday.
So the first thing I pick up on the nose on this, a lot of vanilla. Yeah, this is ex-bourbon cast for sure. Has to be. Might have something else in it too, though. There's some nice kind of gingerbread, kind of warm baking spices in this. Hmm. Fruit notes, something. It's melon, it's pear. Maybe even like a little bit of plum. It's not deep red fruits though, really. Slightly maybe on the plum, I don't know. It's more of a melon thing going on. Apple too. There's something else going on in here too. I can't quite put my finger on. It might just be the the the, the new make. Just really kind of a sweet corn. Not in the bourbon way though. It's not the caramels. It's not the like you know uh, those really like barrel influenced notes. It's like very fresh. Yeah. All right. Alcones Mirador. Solid nose. Give it a taste. Cheers, y'all. Hmm. White chocolate. Hazelnut. Ton of that going on. Really like a rise oily and sweet, and then you just get a ton of spice, drying spice. It's like hot. It's not like that baking cinnamon, you know, like you get on bourbon. It's like cinnamon red hot candies. It's all over the place. I feel like I just ate a handful of those in a good way. A little bit oaky. Medium to long, medium long on the finish. Yeah, this is quite interesting. Really vibrant in your face whiskey. I mean, 56.2%, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, hit me up in the chat. Any of you guys had the Mirador from Balcones before? They make a lot of cool stuff, man. I mean, I got to give mad props to them. Like, I don't know, um, for folks who are not in the U.S., you may not see Balcones very often, but the Texas whiskey scene has been a thing for uh, – for some time, probably five or six years, and they're increasingly putting out a bunch of kind of like innovative whiskeys. Um, they have this one called the Brimstone, which is like this heavy, smoky, it, it literally tastes like liquid barbecue. It's ridiculous. Um, really, really interesting stuff. This one is is kind of right there in line with it. Um, it's, this reminds me a little bit of like, if I was gonna compare it to a Scotch whiskey, it'd be like Compass Box Spice Tree, if, if Spice Tree was up at like, you know, 55, 56%. It's a nice juicy fruit thing at the end of this too. Hmm. Okay. I'm digging it. What else is going on? Let me just catch up here right quick. The Ugadol is on my list. Hurts. Yeah, you have to have the Ugadol. It's a must buy. It should be the next thing you buy. No doubt about it. I've been thinking about doing a video of just like five uh, NAS whiskeys that I think people should have in their life and buy without hesitation. Ugadal is going to be on that list, along with the Corey Bracket. I think they're both really, really good. I know that some people say Ugadal isn't quite as good as it was years ago. That's probably true, but it's still stellar. It's really stellar. I have a bottle um, up there from 2020, so it was from last year, and it's killer. Totally killer thing with Oogie is, is that it's nearly cast strength, and then it has some sherry in it. Not a lot, but just enough to give it a little bit more roundedness and stuff. Man, it's, it's crack. Cuban rum. Havana Smoky. Finished in Isla casks. Really? Oh, man, that's got to be interesting. Peated, a pe <laughs> peated rum. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hard bag has been losing a lot of credibility in the UK due to its crap distribution hype and prices. Not surprised. I mean, you know, last year the committee release hard bag uh, black here was I think 150 bucks. Seems to keep going up. I'm, I'm terrified to see what the one, the, the which apparently is going to be called Scorch. I'm, I'm scared to see what that's going to cost. Um, yeah, it's it's really a bummer. Like I think their core range stuff has maintained quality. I, like I had a I had a 2020 Corey Brecken and a 2020 Ugadol, and I would say they're still good at their price point here in the U.S., which is like in that eighty dollar range. Sometimes you can find them cheaper. Corey Brecken's usually a little bit more. I mean, they're NAS whiskeys, but I still think that they just pack so much complexity and punch that they still are holding 
holding their quality. But you know, I, I haven't messed with the Travon just because it's so ridiculously expensive. If that's the 19 year old Arbeg, it's something like I think it's upwards of over three hundred dollars U.S., which is just I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> that's just too much. Uh, and then the Wee BC, I don't know what people's opinions are on the Wee BC. I, I wasn't like blown away by it. I don't I don't quite understand what they are doing with that one, but I do appreciate that they put an age statement on it because you know they could have easily just went the Lafroy select route and pumped out an NAS and everybody would have bought it anyways. So interesting on this, as it sat in the glass a bit, I'm starting to get pecans, like pecan pie. That's coming through really assertive. Again, this like white chocolate mocha hazelnut thing maybe even some i don't know what you call it you I mean, I mean sort of like sort of like uh toffee or like a like a nice toffee like a, maybe like a um what's the word i don't know like a toffee the nose is really interesting man a lot of like pe pecan pie pecan pecan whatever <laughs> interesting this has changed quite a bit creamy too and there's maple like notes of maple not in that like uh tennessee whiskey way a much cleaner it doesn't have that charcoal note wow what's up aaron happy tasty tuesday thanks for stopping through This is interesting. I'm gonna have to put a little bit more in the glass. That first sip seemed a little bit by the numbers, although really like vibrant, but man, just a couple, what, five minutes or so sitting in the glass, this thing changed considerably. A lot more interesting notes coming up now. I'm gonna put a bit of water on this now and see what's up. This is, seems like another, another good Balcones to check out. It does have a lot of dessert, dessert qualities to it. I could see this being really good with a couple, like, or with like a piece of uh, pie, or like, man, I bet it would even go good in coffee if you would ever do such a thing. Let's see what's up with the water here. Wow, it just keeps getting richer and richer. A little saltiness, maybe. Vanilla is kind of coming through a bit more. Again, this like, oh, I think breaking bourbon just hit it right on that. Yeah, uh, cucumber. Yeah, honeydew melon definitely. Pear definitely. And then there's just a little bit of a red fruit, but I can't tell what it is. It's really, really nice on the nose, especially with the addition of water. It just seems like it's perked up a bit. Man, pancakes. Again, like pancakes, maple syrup. I know how crazy that sounds, but. Here we go. Mm. For two to five year old whiskey, it's killer. Development is a little bit short before it starts getting really spicy. This would obviously, you know, of course, a little bit longer in a barrel would be would do a lot of justice to this. But again, cinnamon red hot candies, literally. Like those little red things, a freaking handful of them. Drying, nice oak spice. A little bit more dark chocolate now, not as much white chocolate. The water's taking a little of that sweetness off. Really good though. And that cooling mint thing at the end too. Props, man. Thank you, Michael, for sharing this uh, sample of the. This is the again the Balcones Mirador. This is uh, fifty-six point two percent. It's a single malt. So this is all barley. Really, really nice. Yeah, digging it. Cohen, what's up in SoCal, buddy? How are you? I'm going to be out your way again pretty soon, man. I'm going out to LA in the uh, uh, beginning of March for a few days. I don't know how much time I'll have, but if I, uh, if I do, you know, we should talk. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, like, you know, their prices aren't bad. The prices aren't bad on Balcones. Some of it seems a little excessive, but boy, I'll tell you, even if, you know, things like the Brimstone, which I, in hindsight, like I, I wouldn't want a whole bottle of, but it's so unique. Um, like one of those definitely have to try once in your life. Whiskey. Yeah, man, they're doing good stuff. 
it may not be the stuff that you're going to stock yourself with, but they're fun to try for sure. A balcony is tasting a flight would be a lot of fun. Yep. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> well, Storo, man. Shots fired. Yeah, I hear you. I'm not, uh, I am not surprised. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I think that, again, I'm just one of those suckers that's going to buy it because I like our big, like I have, uh, what do I have up here? So I have the Supernova, which I think is really fantastic, but it's not worth the money. I mean, the freaking crazy prices on those. Um, I have a Perpetuum committee release. Like, I haven't opened it yet. Like, yeah, these are just, they're just too damn expensive, I think. Yeah. What's up with, yeah. What, third base? Yeah, I know. Third base wine and spirits, they're all over that. I've gone to the other side with Karchus. Ooh, which one? <laughs> nice. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's basically catching. I mean, I, I, if it's not, it's like right there. It's like 56.2 or 54.2%. Next master distiller at Amrut launched his own single malt in India. Really? <gasps> Komet? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. No shit. That's exciting. Yeah, man, as I was mentioning, dude, I got this, uh, the Paul John Christmas release 2020, man. I, oh, I cannot wait. That is going to be a fun whiskey. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I just won't. I would love to have a 19-year-old art bag, but I'm not paying $300 for a 19-year-old whiskey. It's just not happening. I mean, I think the only other company that has that audacity is what McAllen and like theirs isn't even limited. Like the Trevon is at least somewhat limited. The the McAllen 18 is like $300 or something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. In honor of Mickey heads leaving, it's called like the art bag. It's like got some uh, pirate thing on the cover. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm game to try that. I, I like, there's not a lot of rye, rye finished or rye matured scotches out there that, I've been able been able to find the one that I really like is the Glen Glen Morangy Spios. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm kind of with you on that T squared. Like, I I appreciate what they're doing. I like that they like did a craft presentation, but I just I don't know, man. I'm gonna get the ten for five dollars more. It's usually this is kind of where I landed on that. Damn. Yeah, I I have a couple Kilcarren 16s coming. I'm I'm looking forward to trying it. I know that they have a little bit of a red fruit or peach. I know that there's like a little bit of a finish, a two year old finish. Is it Madeira on that Kilcarren 16? It is not much much red fruit. I think it's closer to peach. I thought maybe it was kind of like juicy plum, but it's not. It's it's not dark enough. I mean, this isn't a very like deep whiskey. Obviously, it's very young, but man, it's got a lot going on for whatever the internet said, two to five years old. Really good. Hmm. Great ABV. Damn. This keeps getting better. This might actually be one of the the balconies I like the most. Wow. Great. Michael, shout out, man. Thank you again. This is a delicious sample. French oak. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll get into that. And, you know, maybe I'll do two of them because I know, uh, Daniel, I think I still have a, a one or two balconies from you that I got to try. I agree. Cast strength. Oh, nice. When you want the Ardbeg profile, what other distillers would you consider? The closest, I think, and I don't know if this is going to cause a whole bunch of controversy. I think the closest is Lagavulin. Because I think Laphroaig, it has much more of that medicinal, like iodine, hospital, bed, hospital dental office thing. And Kalila and Kilhoman, it's a lot more of the fresh citrus kind of peatiness, I guess. 
And then when you think of like Brooklady, I mean, the Octomores are all over the board. Port Charlotte is, I think, still closer to Kilhoman than it is to Ardbeg. And Bunahaven, there's barely anything peated. And the stuff they do peated might be a little closer. It's just not as smoky. I mean, I think Lagavulin's probably the closest. I don't know. That's tough. I did have some samples of the Perpetuum Committee release whiskey, and it was great. Trouble, yeah, yeah, exactly, man. You're totally right. Yeah, that's the problem. Peter White's got some of that in the glass right now. Gary's got some Kil Kilcarran 16. Wow, dude, you're loaded. Gary don't play, man. I have a bottle of it coming. I'll have it in a couple of days. The Madeira, the 17 Old Spring Make Madeira. It is way overpriced. I paid like 270 but you know, sometimes you just do things. <laughs> Andrew Page, I like the Wee Beastie better than the 10, though. Really? Probably due to the getting tired. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. However, we're in some minority, according to. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it is a nice kind of like breath of fresh air, maybe, but I don't know if I would say I could go as far as that. I, I just don't, I don't think it has the finish and it doesn't have that. I feel like that road tart thing is replaced with pepper. So speaking of our bag, as I told y'all, um, I'm going to open a, a, a new bottle of our bag right now. And then tonight, uh, stick around if you want to drink and talk about more Ard bag. Uh, hour number one at Telex and Malt Show. We are going to be revisiting the classic king of Isla 10 year old scotches my humble opinion, Ardbeg 10. And in hour number two, we're going to do a head-to-head -head tasting between Ardbeg Black Committee release and Ardbeg Black Limited release. Difference in ABVs. We're going to give them a taste, see what's up, see if we have a strong recommendation one way or the other. That is if you can ever find a committee release anymore. But uh, I'm about to open up a bottle of Ardbeg myself. What we got here is Ardbeg Dark Cove. Ardbeg Dark Cove, um, was originally a committee release in 2016. And this one in particular is the limited release because the committee release is so sought after, it's really hard to find. Uh, comes in a pretty cool art baggy type box, kind of minimalist. Um, here's the tail of the tape on this one. It is 46.5% ABV. It says, take this whiskey and hide it well, for its heart has been matured in dark sherry casks, imparting Imparting waves of treacle toffee, coal tar, squid ink. <laughs> squid ink noodles? What? <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> and toasted coffee grounds. The darkest art bag ever is what they claim. Um, there's a whole bunch of other information on here, just marketing stuff with their interesting stories and all that about art bag and about the whiskey, so on and so forth. Uh, it doesn't say anything on here about chill filtration or natural color, but my general understanding is that Ardbeg does not chill filter or add color, and if they add color, it's very little. However, they don't say it on here, which is kind of a bummer. So we're just going to have to assume that maybe they have. Um, let me get clean glass for this bad boy. Uh, we'll do it in this one. Uh, let me know in the chat, too. Y'all ever had the Ardbeg Dark Cove? Got opinions on this? Let me know. Um, I have had the committee release, which I really enjoyed. This one I have not had. 46.5%. Interesting choice. Boom. Oh, man. This is why I love our bag. That first smell of the bottle is just perfect. Quintessential Isla. Yeah. Wow. So, this is what the color of the supposedly darkest art bag is looking like. And that is rather dark for an art bag. Not going to lie. Um, it's not very dark, but it's. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen an art bag quite this dark. Ugadal is not, not even close. I'm going to let this get a little oxygen. Let me catch up here right quick. See what's going on. Yeah. I agree. I love the, uh, I absolutely love the uh, Red Breast 12 cast drink. I think it was one of my whiskey of the year a couple of years back. I, they're freaking great. Yep, 100% agree. 
Maybe not the Oogie, but I, I agree. I think the I think I think uh the Frog 10 cast strength is the best thing they put out. You might have sent me the French oak. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to look. I don't quite know. Whoa! Right on, Gary. Congratulations on that, man. That's a huge score. <laughs> nice. Those are not easy to get. I want to go back to Welsh, what Welsh Toro was saying. I think, yeah, I think, like, for your money, a heavily complex peated scotch, you cannot beat Lafroy 10 Castro. It's just fantastic. Uh, each batch that comes out every year is a little bit different, so you do get some variation in the flavor profile. It's only like 70 bucks USD, which is a damn steal. Um, I actually have a really old one. Let me see if I can find that up here. I got a couple of these. So this is this one is my favorite is the batch 10, but right behind it, this is batch four of the Lafroy 10 cast ring. This is from 2012. Yeah, I have a batch three as well. This one is freaking fantastic. Um, but yeah, each one is a little bit different, but I'm telling you, they're they're worth your money for sure. If you see Lafroy 10 cast rank and you like peated scotch, buy it on site. It really just can't be beat. Good Lord. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Jack said 10 and the Wee Beastie are just different. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Ben Demon Hunter. What's up, buddy? Thanks for stopping through. Always good to see you. Whiskey friend, what's going on? Happy Tasty Tuesday to you. We are just talking peated whiskeys. You know, it's what we do here on Tasty Tuesday. It's all about the whiskey. And uh, we're going to have a lot more coming. I always buy a big one liter bottle of Ardbeg 10 in the airport before today. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I love me some Ardbeg 10. I'm sure it isn't dark as Beaumont 15. <laughs> yeah, well, Beaumont 15, the darkest is dark because they probably put like a gallon of food coloring. <laughs> but yeah, so this is yeah, this is a dark coat, man. I mean, this is pretty dark for an art bag. I'm not sure I've seen an art bag dark. I also don't know what dark sherry is, which is what they call this. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Um, at least I'm gonna find out. So yeah, again, art bag dark cove. Um, this is the limited release. It is 46.5%, and it just says that it's been matured in dark sherry casks. So it's not a finish. It's a maturation. So that means it's been sitting in there the entire time. From what I understand, I don't know what else to expect about this, but let's give it a shot. So on the nose right away, this is reminding me of a fresher version of Ugadol. You're getting some of that rounded sweetness off the fruit notes, which is definitely the sherry. But this one's got a bit more spice on the nose. Vanilla, toffee, that deep seaweed, vegetal note. It's The nose is great. Really, really nice nose. There's a mintiness, kind of a peppermint freshness to it. Wow. I love this nose. It's it's it reminds me. Yeah, if I was going to compare it to any others, it would be like Ugadal. Man, fantastic! All right, let's give it a taste. Come on, y'all. Mm hmm. Oh man. Wow. That is delicious. Oh. Really well balanced. It is. Oh man. So this thing really comes in. I hang on. Okay. It comes in really sweet. 
but it's like um like powdered sugar on a cherry pie or something like that it's fruit it's sweet as it develops though it goes all over the place and in good ways it's like imbalanced the heavy peat notes you get it's like charcoal ash that vegetal deep earthy tone of Ardbeg, but it is just working side by side with this really decadent like cherry cordial um i don't know they said squid ink noodles on here i think i'm not sure i'm picking up that but again the the tar and it has got an incredibly long finish sweet savory good spice cherry uh, like a vanilla cherry cola there's a bit of a cola note in this it's sweeter than I expected. I would say this is sweeter than Ugadal. This is, dude, this is freaking delicious, though. I'm not even going to lie. I don't think this is as good as Ugi, but it's right there. And it's different enough. I'm impressed. I'm not sure if this is a go-to for. Like, that's the thing I'm trying to work work on my brain. Like, when I crave an Ardbeg, like, it, it's just a bit too dessert like and sweet to maybe be something i want to like daily pour like oogie or uh or 10 and cory vrecken of course is like for me a, a you know that's a special pour because my god it's so intense but this this is by far the best limited release i've ever had from our bag no doubt this is better than the kelpie this is way better than the drum it's way better than the grooves um it's better than the black committee for sure. Or maybe it's like right there with the black committee. Yeah, I can, I sort of get the hype. Again, here's one more look at the bottle of this. Man, that finish is still hanging on. I'm getting almost this like, um, just like old coffee. Um, like, uh, yeah, just like chocolate covered, some type of chocolate covered nuts. To the box. I'm glad I have three bottles of this. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. This is going to really set the stage for going into the show tonight because uh, we're going to be doing so much art bag, and now I'm going to have this art bag dark hove on the brain. Oh, God. oh, Rick. And it's only 46.5%. I don't understand the point five, but yeah, I'm I'm game with this one. Let me catch up here on the chat. Oh, fuck. There's even like a bit of a tobacco, like a leather note. The thing is about this, it's just not as there's not as much depth to it as I want, which is why I. Like, I would love a bottle of the committee release because I can only imagine that you're just going to get even more of it out of that. It is very sweet, but for what you get, it would be nice if the development or like it developed a bit longer on the palate. But I mean, when this came out in 2016, I think the price was fair. Nowadays, this is like probably what, 210 or something like that on secondary market. Like, I'm sure it's ridiculous. It might be worth it once in your life. Probably not. But Man. Hey, I'm impressed. This is really good. All right. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what the hell dark sherry is. But I'll tell you, whatever they put in this is fucking killer, man. Yeah, well, yeah, California. California's oogie, oogies are all over the place with that, with that great price. <laughs> I built my collection of art bags off when I lived in DC off shipments from California, <laughs> buying like Corey Breckens for sixty three dollars. I was like, hell yeah, yeah, Louis Tomwell Hennessy, yeah. Yep, I'm with you on that. Yeah, no. I'm, <laughs> once you go with the cast strength, dude. Yeah, God, I love the Red Breast Twelve cast strength. I, it's just absolutely killer, killer whiskey, man. Enjoy that. 
folks talking to Ben Dima Hunter, talking about birthday bourbons. All right, y'all. You want to agree? Yeah, but okay. Oh, uh oh. Be there or be nowhere. Have you had this limited release, Alan? I'd be curious what you thought of this. I don't know if you reviewed it or not. I don't remember. Um, but damn. This is. I don't understand why they don't just make this part of their range. <laughs> they could sell this shit like crazy. They got to bring this back, man. I Like I said, I thought the Kelpie was pretty solid. I thought the... Um, the grooves was okay. It was, it was pretty good, actually. I, I'm not going to lie. I thought the grooves was pretty good. The drum was just disappointing. And the black, I think, was redemptive. But again, at price, you know, I take price into consideration on my reviews. I, it's, it's tough, man. It's just tough. If this was like 100, even at NAS at 120, I would say you'd grab one of these ones. I got to have another four of this. God damn. I loved it. I like it. I had a sample once. Let me know in the chat if any of y'all have ever had the like the Dark Oak Committee release or this one for that matter. I know Welsh Toro said he had had it. Um the the committee release I think would probably just like fill in the blanks of where I think this is missing a few things, but I'm telling you this is really this is pretty impressive. It's a bit sweeter than I expected, that's for sure. Oh. Yeah, Perpetuum. You can still find some of the Perpetuums out there, too. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, man, I know it. I know all the spots too. <laughs> all right, y'all. So we, we got about 15 minutes. We're getting close to time for keeping our eye on Telex. We have uh, we have ourselves about yeah 15 minutes or so. We got 23 people in the chat, 22, which is fantastic, man. Great to hang out with everybody on the Tasty Tuesday. And we're just getting started. Uh, let me just give everybody a quick reminder. As always, I will drop the link in the chat for Telex and Malt Show when uh, – I get the bat signal from my partner in crime, Telex the Whiskey Tech. Tonight, we're going about Ardbeg. Shocking, right? We're going to be doing Ardbeg 10, and we are going to be doing, uh, in hour number two, a, a comparison taste between Ardbeg, um, Ardbeg Black and Ardbeg Black are the committee release versus the limited release. Um, so we'll talk all about that. We'll see if we can pick up any differences and uh, let you know. Um, the black is still a pretty readily available whiskey. The limited release, the, co the committee release is getting harder to find and is at exorbitant prices. Because there are too many people out there who instead of drinking the damn bottle, just stash it away and drive up the fucking cost. That's what's going on with that. So uh, mine is open. And I just think that there's too many damn people out there who are reselling these and jacking up the prices. And that's why we're getting such a crazy secondary market because people have this idea that they got to get their hands on it. Um, drink your whiskey, y'all, if you can, <laughs> even if it takes a while. Wow. You're talking about the regular release or the committee? That's not, that's 150 to 190 pounds. Okay. That's like two hundred thirty dollars U.S. or something like that. I'm still really interested in trying the Anno. So, yeah, man, I don't know what to tell you about that. I think the Anno. I'm not sure where it fits in. I, I it is not going to give you what you want compared to the Corey Breck and the Ten for the Ugadal, in my opinion. It's it's. I've always felt like it was kind of like a diet version of Arpeg in a way. It does have some, a little bit of interesting notes because they have, it doesn't have the, uh, that citrus note that the 10 has. I think it's because they use a little bit of virgin oak in that. I don't remember. I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about the Anno. Um, it's not one that I would buy again. I mean, probably worth tasting before you buy it if you can get your hands on it. 
kind of like three out of five range for me, if that makes sense. Actually, I might have a review of it up on my channel from way back in the day if you want to check it out. Uh, I know some folks, Telex loves the Anno. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of uh, a bear on that one. Though. He's rather bullish. Resellers are nervous. <laughs> hey, man, you earned it. Maher's got to head out. Hey, buddy, cheers all the way over to India, man. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll hit you up on, um, on Instagram uh, so we can continue our chat about Paul John because I am so stoked that I got this Christmas uh, 2020 edition from them. Uh, love to chat with you about it. Don Holland's in the house through the car with an ejection Regular Dark Cove CR is two. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. That's totally real, man. It's not just the flippers, but, like, I think in the U.S., it, I'm a little bit more tuned into, like, how that is in the bourbon field. Because in bourbon, the flipping thing is just out of control. There are whiskeys, weeded whiskeys especially, like Weller, which is literally five or ten years ago you would find at the bottom shelf at a liquor store for freaking no joke. A Weller Special Reserve, the lowest in their line, you'd find that for like a $25 bottle. Those are flipping on secondary markets upwards of like 150 bucks, now, which is just insane. They're 12 year old. I've seen going for like 250. People are just paying crazy prices for Weller because it's allocated in certain states. You can't really find it in certain places and find it in others. So all these people who get their hands on it are just selling it to all these these Weller hype kids in <laughs> people in other states because the weighted bourbon is so palatable and so sweet and all that. Um, and so like everybody loves it who's been getting into bourbon over the last decade or so. And the prices are just like through the roof. I'm, I'm not even kidding, man. Like you would, it would blow your mind. The quality of this whiskey, it's not like it's bad, but versus like what people are willing to pay for it. Same thing with Blanton single barrel from Buffalo Trace. Again, a, two years ago, a Blanton, a bottle of Blanton single barrel whiskey it was the first single barrel, solid enough. It was like 65, 70 bucks. I, I have seen regulars, and we're not even talking about the gold or the straight from the barrel or any of this, regular Blanton single barrel bottles in some of the like sites going for like fuck man 140 150 dollars people are willing to pay for a blanted it's crazy and so yeah man i mean i think you're right it's it's a combination of people like hoarding it and then trying to sell it on secondary to create scarcity and then you have people who are just new to bourbon or new to whiskey and like they you know they hear about these brand names and they want to try it and are like willing to go just spend exorbitant amounts of money on what is honestly average bourbon um so yeah i don't know it is what it is and i'm hoping it'll burst soon but it doesn't seem to be happening <laughs> i mean god i'll tell you two years ago eh taylor barrel proof really solid barrel proof whiskey they um it's not an easy one to get but you can find it it was like i saw it going for like 200 dollars. now just like a year and a half later it's like man 400 bucks people are winning pay for that shit it's crazy so there's a lot to blame and i agree i think y'all are uh yes yeah. <laughs> they do peter white they fucking do man i don't i don't know so yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of uh blame to go around um but yeah it's the bottom line is is it's ridiculous and like for folks who are in the know, like we got to navigate these waters <laughs> because you know, eventually it'll pop, but it doesn't seem like it's coming anytime soon. So we got to keep our eyes peeled for the diamonds in the rough out there. Whiskey friends heading out. Take it easy, buddy. Take care. Be well. Anyways, good always to see Alan, the whiskey friend. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point too, man. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, <laughs> dude, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you could probably retire if you have like a case of those things. <laughs> Just swing on over the border, man. I, I People will pay you out, out, obscene prices for Weller's Wells. It's ridiculous. And like, I mean, my personal palate, I like, I like more rye, rye heavy mash bills and bourbon because, to be honest with you, I, I just find you get a little bit more out of it and a bit more complexity. But a lot of people love the weeded bourbon, and uh, boy, man, they are willing to pay for it. That is, that is for sure. I don't know, I don't know how they've done it, but the, the word is out on Weller. Yeah. That's true too. It's all it's all part of the machine. You're right. All right, I'm on Telex Watch right now. I think we'll have a, a link for you guys relatively soon here. And actually, I do. I'll drop this in the chat. Feel free to head on over in a few minutes. Telex is going to be kicking off Tasty Tuesday Telex and Malt Show. As I mentioned, we're going to be. It's all about our bag this week. We're going to be doing the classic Art Bag 10 in uh, hour number one. And in the second hour, head to head, Art Bag Black Committee release versus Art Bag Black Limited release. Should be a lot of fun. Um, hope you guys can join. Before you go, if you haven't yet, smash the subscribe button, man. I'd appreciate it. And uh, give this a thumbs up if you can, man. I appreciate that as well. Anything you can do to uh, support the show, uh, it's all about the whiskey here. And uh, I enjoy talking to you all about this stuff each and every week. So. Appreciate the support and got a love for all of you. Mm. Also, fucking dark cold. I don't know, man. They got to figure out a way to put this in their core range. I'm sure it'd be expensive because of these, quote, dark sherry casts. But holy damn. Maybe they don't because it's not different enough from Uzi Dog. I mean, it's definitely more sherry, no doubt about that. Much more sherry, much it's much sweeter. But, God, I mean, this over like the Anno, in my opinion, would have been fantastic. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, they really are defined, man. You, dude, I'm telling you, you'll drink it and you'll be like, you know what? This is good, but it's not going to blow your mind. You should <laughs> just, just join, join, the, join the flipping brigade, man. Just flip that. Make yourself some money. Get yourself, <laughs> get yourself a couple bottles or something. <laughs> Here's that link again for Telex. <laughs> Hope you guys can join over there. Uh, I'm going to sign off, man. Um, if you can't join, stay safe, be well. I got another review coming out Friday. As always, be sure to check that out. And uh, I'll see you all next week for another Tasty Tuesday, man. Be safe, wear a mask, stay healthy. Much love. See you guys in a few minutes. Peace.